I've always loved the Total War games, and Total War Warhammer 1 and 2 are no exception. I haven't done a proper video on the undead in this game yet, so I decided it'd be a good idea to look at all the necromancy friendly factions in the game. It has multiple different flavours of undead for you to play as, so variety isn't a problem. You can play as the Vampire Count factions, which will be the focus of this video, who specialise in the more traditional kinds of undead like medieval style zombies and skeletons, as well as various other large vampire themed behemoths. For a classic necromancy experience, the Vampire Count factions are the best fit. If Carnage and Mayhem are what you're looking for, it's really hard to beat the Pirates of the Vampire Coast. These factions field advanced kinds of zombies, like zombie musketeers, zombie grenadiers, and zombies with big guns. There's cannons and all kinds of ocean-themed horrors like these ogre-sized zombie-fish-squid hybrids. The Vampire Coast factions are my favourite overall because of the immense firepower they offer and the incredible destruction they're capable of. There's explosions and guns and shit getting blown up. I really love all the chaos on the battlefield when you play this faction. Finally we have the Tomb King factions that field ancient Egyptian themed undead. The units are very versatile and well rounded, but also in low tech, and they have a very ancient feel to them. Almost all of their armies are skeletons, but they've also got access to powerful magical machines, like the huge Hyro Titan or the Necro Sphinx. They're also the only undead that aren't vampires. For the Tomb Kings and Vampire Coast I'll do separate videos because this video will be long enough. For the Vampire Counts factions, the playable ones are Sylvania, which is led by Manfred von Karstein, von Karstein, which is led by Vlad or Isabella von Karstein, Isabella von Karstein. and my favourite, the Barrow Legion which is led by Heinrich Kemmler. All of these different Vampire Count sub-factions play similarly, but there are minor differences between the factions. What they have in common is Vampiric Corruption, which is the measure of unholy defilement in a province. It causes attrition to living armies, and also destabilizes public order in other factions, so you can use it offensively. If you manage to destabilize an enemy faction enough with your corruption, a rogue undead army will spawn and cause havoc in the province. The downside is that undead armies take attrition in provinces without vampiric corruption, which means that when you enter the enemy province with your undead army, you either have to cope with the attrition or begin raiding immediately. Raiding stops the attrition, but it slows you down. The vampire counts units never rout in battle and are also immune to fear. They always fight to the bitter end, and if things are not going your way and your leaders lose their resolve, the entire army will begin to crumble to dust. Wherever giant battles are fought by enemies or by yourself, where lots of soldiers have died, battle sites will appear. These are only visible to the vampire counts and your leaders can use their raised dead ability to recruit new units on the fly. The quantity and quality of the units available to raise is dependent on the size of the battlefield. But for large battlefields, the units available to raise are often very high tier. Early on, you can use this to get super strong units that you can't recruit yet, like hex wraiths or terror geists. A peculiarity of the vampire counts is that they have no ranged units, with the exception of having limited living crossbowmen and musketeers if you unlock them with the von Karstein bloodline. Bloodlines can be unlocked by spending blood kisses, which are points you get from destroying enemy factions. For the necromancy lovers, the Baron Legion is probably the best choice, and it's also the only one I've tried, so I'll limit further discussion to the Baron Legion alone. It's a necromancer focused faction rather than a vampire focused one, although vampires are also available as heroes. Necromancer leaders and heroes are cheaper for the Baron Legion. The story behind Heinrich Kemmler is basically that he was a powerful necromancer who was defeated by his rivals and he somehow became a deranged and powerless beggar. He lived a long time as an insane, gutter-dwelling hobo until he came across a shrine to the Chaos Gods or something and vowed to destroy the world and everyone in it if only they would restore him to his former glory. 
they agreed because the Chaos Gods want to see the world burn. And then Heinrich Kemmler rose again. The coolest thing about Heinrich Kemmler is that he can summon a powerful undead footnight called Krell during battles. Early on, Krell is basically a one-man army, and late game he's still extremely useful. The armies of the Barrow Legion are led by Heinrich Kemmler's master necromancers, who look like insane homeless men given necromancy robes and necrotic powers. They wear clothes made from human remains, and their spells are mostly support spells like buffing and healing. They can also summon temporary zombies in battles. The majority of your army leaders will be these insane necromancer hobos, but unique vampire lords can be unlocked via bloodlines and used as army leaders as well. I actually preferred the master necromancers though, because their upkeep was less and they could also recruit undead units more cheaply. The vampires are good though for different kinds of direct damage spells that the necromancers cannot do. They're also better in melee combat. And as an extra bonus, they're also pretty hot. If you get sick of looking at your hobo-like master necromancers, you can always recover by looking at some nice vampires. For heroes, you've got whites, vampires, necromancers, and banshees. In Total War games, heroes are like special agents. They can be embedded into armies to fight, or run around on the campaign map helping at home, or causing mayhem abroad. Necromancers are like master necromancers, except they cannot lead armies. They're good for supplementing your armies with additional spells, and for boosting income back home. Vampires are good at spreading vampiric corruption, as well as doing direct damage spells and debuffing spells on enemies in combat. I especially love this spell, which demoralizes the enemy and sounds like a haunting screech. Whites fight like foot knights if embedded into an army, otherwise they help out around at home by raising public order. Banshees work like assassins on the campaign map, killing other heroes outright, which is very costly to the enemy. They can also damage walls, which helps with sieges. In combat, they're very difficult to hurt, and they're good at disengaging from enemies and slipping around the map. The undead available to the Baron Legion are zombies, skeletons, spirits, and large undead monstrosities, and also evil vampire-themed creatures, like wolves and bats. Zombies are the cheapest and most expendable. Their meat shields pure and simple. Skeletons come in the form of spearmen and swordsmen, as well as heavily armoured variants like the Graveguards. Graveguards are armoured and come either with a sword and shield or a two-handed sword. You can also get Black Knights. The Black Knights are skeleton knights with swords and shields or with lances. Advanced undead abominations include the Crypt Fiends, which are like fast zombies that deal poison damage and Crypt Horrors, which are huge, monstrous shock infantry. For vampire-themed units, you've got the bats and wolves, which are good for harassment and picking off fleeing enemies, as well as Vargeists, which are large, flying, monstrous bat things, and the Vargolf, which is a huge bat thing that cannot fly and is insanely strong. For the spirits, you've got Hex Wraiths, which are spectral horsemen with scythes, and the Can Wraiths, which are scythe-wielding ghostly infantry. There's also the Black Coach, which is like a ghostly horse and carriage with a Grim Reaper riding in it, and it behaves a bit like a chariot. Finally, you've got the Terror Geist, which is like a huge undead worthen. So your typical Barrow Legion army will be a horde of skeletons with meat shield zombies and supplemented by various monstrous creatures. I love this faction, and it's a great one for those who want a faction of world-hating necromancers that want to kill everyone with legions of skeletons and spirits. I absolutely love this game, by the way. I've had it for ages and always liked it, but somehow recently I've finally discovered it properly. It could be the best strategy game for necromancers available right now. It's super polished and the battles and grand strategy aspects are really good. The enemy AI is also very good. Not perfect, but good, and certainly better than a lot of the other games like it. Leadless to say, it gets a 10 out of 10 from me in every aspect. The only problem is the price of entry. For the best experience, you need to own both Total War Warhammer and Total War Warhammer 2. 
This is because owning the first game gives you access to the races of the first game in the second game, and also gives you a new campaign which is giant and encompasses almost the entire Warhammer world. It's unfortunately been squished down a little though. The western and southern continents have been clipped. I don't know why they did this, but perhaps due to game engine constraints. Anyway, it's slightly annoying but not too bad. The other campaign has the western and southern continents in far greater detail, but is completely missing the northeastern continent. To get access to the other two very cool necromancy factions I mentioned briefly at the beginning of the video, you'll also need to purchase two other DLCs. Curse of the Vampire Coast for the Undead Pirate Factions, and Rise of the Tomb Kings for the ancient Egyptian themed undead. So Sega is really raiding your wallet with this game, but I think it's worth it. The sheer amount of joy I've had with this game means that the game has been well worth the asking price, for me at least. Thanks for watching, I hope this video has been informative. I'll do another video like this one for the other two undead factions as well. I've got more videos on necromancy stuff coming soon.